Hello, AI friends. Those of you who listen to the podcast know that for the last couple of months, I've been running an educational beta test. Basically, we've been experimenting with a different approach to helping people learn how to use AI tools that's focused on tutorials, case studies, and challenges that instead of courses which take hours or even days to complete, we have fast, interesting, high-impact, very focused tutorials that you can do in a few minutes, and then challenges that actually walk you step-by-step -step through doing those things in the real world with those tools. I've found, and I think that our beta testers have found so far, that the faster that people People actually start learning by doing, the more empowered to go try more AI tools they feel. So I want to invite you guys now to join the February cohort of this beta test. What it means is that you will get access to a full library of content from the past couple months. That's well over 60 videos and challenges right now, as well as a new drop every single day of a tutorial or a case study or a use case video and a companion challenge. It's a really good time. And on top of all of that, there is a big supportive community of people who are going through this learning process as well. Everyone from CEOs to professionals to creators to people who are just curious and interested. So if you're interested in joining, go to bit.ly slash AI beta. You can learn more and sign up there. That's bit.ly slash AI beta. That link is obviously in the show notes as well. And I'm going to show you an example of the type of tutorial that we have here with a GPT builder. So guys, hope you are interested in joining. Come check it out. And either way, thanks for watching the channel. Today, we are looking at custom GPTs, how to build the simplest versions of them, and how I'm actually using them to improve productivity at this AI Education Project Beta. Hello, AI friends. Today's tutorial is all about custom GPTs. Now, this is not the be-all, end-all tutorial. In fact, this is going to be a very simple version, the type that you can get up and running in just a few minutes. But I thought we'd start here. And part of the reason that I wanted to share this is that in many circumstances with these new AI tools, the use cases are really theoretical, right? Part of the magic is that they open up new possibilities for what we might do or how we might think about building whatever it is we're building. However, when it comes to GPTs or custom GPTs, almost immediately I found that they were actually useful for me in a day-to-day -day kind of way. Now, that is in spite of the fact that I actually agree with the assessment that in many ways they are just glorified custom instructions. So let's talk first about what custom instructions were, just so you understand that feature. It's a little bit of a bonus in this tutorial. Then let's talk about one GPT I built for myself as a part of this beta already, and another that we're going to do live today. So first, let's go over to custom instructions. You're going to want to click on your name down in the lower left-hand corner. And this is a feature that came out over the summer, and it basically just gave the user the ability to give ChatGPT a little bit more persistent information about who they are and how they like responses formatted in general. Now, this is something you can turn on or off, but it's basically meant to be the default setting for ChatGPT to respond to you. It was just two questions. The first was, what would you like ChatGPT to know about you to provide better responses? And then the second was, how would you like ChatGPT to respond? For me, given that my default usage had to do with helping explain things as part of the AI breakdown, I told ChatGPT that I was an AI podcaster, explaining AI to a mass audience, and that when it came to how I wanted it to respond, I wanted it to explain things at an undergraduate comprehension level for people without deep technical understanding, but who do have a basic working knowledge and background in technology. I also wanted it to prioritize answers in bullets of no more than one to two sentences per bullet. Now, these are all things that I had to add basically every time I prompted it previously. I found after lots of experimentation that asking for an undergraduate level of comprehension for an audience who has some technical background but who is not technical per se seems to produce the best results. And in general, I'm looking for things that are concise and bullets tend to get at that as well as anything else. So those were custom instructions. And really one way of thinking about GPTs is as a little mini apps that are built around a different set of custom instructions for a specific use case for ChatGPT. So let's go to my GPTs and let's go edit the AI tutorial muse so you can see what I was going for here. Basically, this is a GPT I created to try to help as a brainstorming partner for thinking about the types of tutorials and use cases and case studies that I wanted to share with you guys as part of this beta learning experiment. So this is the preview field, but let's click over onto configure. This is where I can change the icon, where I can change the name, where I can change the description. But really what matters are the instructions. So these instructions were developed through a conversational process with the GPT Builder, which you'll see in just a minute. 
But the result of them in this case was that, quote, AI Tutorial Muse is now honed to generate tutorial ideas specifically about generative AI, encompassing tools such as language models, image generators, video avatars, speech synthesizers, and editing tools. Its aim is to deliver engaging and brief explanations of how these tools work, their applications, and creative ways to use them suitable for short videos or write-ups. The GPT will steer clear of dense technical details, instead emphasizing the creative and practical uses of generative AI in a format that's accessible to enthusiasts and newcomers alike. Again, as you can probably tell, I'm basically describing the core of this audience. Now, conversation starters, these are basically the buttons that get you rolling. I have suggested tutorial topic on AI, suggested tutorial topic related to a specific AI platform, suggested tutorial topic related to the way a specific industry would use AI, or suggested tutorial topic related to the way a specific job function would use AI. Again, clearly you can see what I'm thinking about. Now, one way to superpower your GPT is to actually give it access to specific knowledge. You can, for example, upload files. What's more, you can also create actions that are ways that GPT can access information or take actions outside of ChatGPT, but that's in that more advanced module and we'll do a separate tutorial video for that. This is, as I said, just the very basic custom instruction sort of version of a custom GPT. So let's go over and check it out. Let's suggest a tutorial topic related to a specific industry. What comes back? Revolutionizing fashion design with AI, from concept to catwalk. It suggests an introduction, exploring how tools like generative image models are helping inspire new types of designs, how AI is enabling more customization and personalization, and a bunch of other topics as well. Now you'll notice that this is a lot more expansive than the type of thing that you've been getting here. But part of the reason that I decided not to refine it further after I had initially done this is that this is really for me right now, just a brainstorming tool. And so it doesn't so much matter to me that this actually looks more like eight different tutorials rather than one, because I can make that determination rather than relying on the AI to do so. Now, I think this brings up an important point and something that you will hear me harp on a lot, which is that just because AI has a certain type of capacity doesn't mean you need to automate everything away. Ultimately, these tools are in service of whatever goal you're trying to achieve. And if they get you 80% of the way there and the other 20% is easier to do just as you as a human, don't feel like you have to spend a ton of time perfecting it just to have it be quote unquote fully automated. Now with that though, let's go back and actually create a new GPT for a use case that I have literally today as I am recording this video. So we go back to my GPTs and we're going to create a GPT. So as you can see, the way that the builder actually works is in unsurprisingly a chat-based interface. GPT builder says, Hi, I'll help you build a brand new GPT. You can say something like, make a creative who helps generate visuals for new products, or make a software engineer who helps format my code. What would you like to make? I'd like to make the perfect copywriter for job descriptions. I have a new AI education project that needs to hire for a variety of roles, and we need great copy to get it done. From there, it's starting to work and will likely ask additional questions as well. GPT Builder comes back. Great choice. This GPT will specialize in crafting engaging job descriptions for your AI education project. Now let's give it a name. How about Copyright Pro? Would you like to confirm this name or suggest another? I think we want something different because we want to emphasize the job description aspect of this. Let's try something more like Job Description Copy Hero. Hey, it's supposed to be the good copywriter, not me. Now, this is kind of the fun part that's not necessarily hyper-functional. Now that we've got a name, it's generating a profile picture, obviously using Dolly 3. Sure, let's go with this Superman idea. This works. GPT Builder comes back, and this is where we get more into the substance of the thing. Fantastic. Now let's refine the context of Job Description Copy Hero. First, let's focus on the types of job descriptions it will specialize in. Are these job descriptions for specific roles within the AI education project, or a broader range of positions? Also, do you want the GPT to adhere to a particular style or tone in the job descriptions? Now, it just went off and added all this stuff, but let's actually answer those questions. These will be job descriptions for multiple roles and multiple functions within the AI education project. The writing should be energetic, enthusiastic, excited, playful without being cringe or trying too hard to be cool 
or funny. In other words, the tone should be natural and enthusiastic, but still professional. Let's put that in and then we'll refine it some more. Job Description Copy Hero is now fine-tuned to create job descriptions that are energetic, enthusiastic, and playful, yet remain professional. The GPT will help you craft descriptions that are engaging and reflective of the dynamic nature of your AI education project, appealing to a broad range of candidates. Now I want to tell the GPT Builder a little bit more about the project so it has that context. So I said, let me tell you a little bit more about the context of the AI education project so Job Description Copy Hero can incorporate that into responses. The goal of the AI education project is to help as many people as possible have agency in the massive transformation to the AI-powered world we're moving into. We believe that this transition can be incredibly positive for people's lives and careers, but only if they have the resources to learn and apply AI to their personal pursuits and professions. The team helping build this AI education project should be aligned with the mission to help as many people as possible achieve their dreams with AI. Let's send that and see if it grocks it, no pun intended. GPT Builder gets back. Job Description Copy Hero is now equipped with a deeper understanding of your AI education project's mission. It will create job descriptions that not only attract qualified candidates, but also inspire them to be part of your transformative journey in AI education. The descriptions will emphasize the project's commitment to empowering people through AI, aligning with your goal of helping individuals harness AI for personal and professional growth. Now, one thing I'm flagging for you guys, although I don't think it's worth refining yet until we see the actual results, is that my concern with giving it that sort of mission orientation is that that might compete against the sort of irreverence and playfulness that I suggested in the tone before. I can see ChatGPT being a little overwrought because of that mission, but we'll come back and see if that's actually a problem in practice. All right, so if you've done any of our tutorials around prompting, you'll probably recognize this part as giving ChatGPT a format of responses that we'd like to see. I write one additional note on format of responses. Every time Job Description Copy Hero writes a job description, I would like it to include three sections. The first should be a one-paragraph overview of the role no more than 75 words long. The second section should be responsibilities and should be around 10 specific responsibilities or tasks that the role will be responsible for. The third section should be skills and attributes and once again should be 5 to 10 bullets of specific skills or personality attributes that would make a candidate successful in the role. GPT Builder comes back. Job Description Copy Hero is now set up to write job descriptions with a specific three-section format, a brief overview, a detailed list of responsibilities, and required skills and attributes. The structured approach will ensure each job description is clear, comprehensive, and aligned with your AI education's project's goals. Now, at this point, I have a bunch of ideas for further refinement. Like, one of the things that I'm worried about is when I give it a role that it doesn't exactly understand. It might not ask me for further clarification. But for now, this will work to begin with. Now, let's go over to Configure. You can see the instructions have captured some of those conversations that we've just had. And these conversation starters aren't really relevant. In fact, let's not worry about conversation starters for the sake of this project. Given that this is very much just for me, it doesn't matter as much here. Now, for the sake of showing you guys something, I will upload a file here. This is a lever guide to crafting great job descriptions. And frankly, I haven't even really figured out how much I agree with everything that's in there, but I want to give you a chance to see how that works. ChatGPT writes, if you upload files under knowledge, conversations with your GPT may include file contents. Files can be downloaded when Code Interpreter is enabled. Now, I'm not sure if this will actually work the way I want it to, which is basically to learn from this document rather than pull from it, but let's see how it does. I'm fine with letting this data improve GPT's models, and as I mentioned before, I do not want to create a new action. So let's do a little preview. Please create a job description for a community manager for the AI education project. This role will focus on supporting learners going through the educational experience in ways including discussions on communications channels like Discord, as well as helping find additional resources for learners. Basically, what you can see I'm doing here is that I'm not leaving ChatGPT to just guess at what I want from saying a quote-unquote community manager I'm trying to give it a little bit more information. Let's see how it does. All right, and here's what's come back. Job title, Community Manager AI Education Project. The overview section, the Community Manager for our AI Education Project is a dynamic role focused on nurturing and supporting our learner's journey. Within this position, you'll play a pivotal role in facilitating discussions, guiding learners through educational content, and sourcing additional resources to enrich their learning experience. This role is vital for maintaining a vibrant, engaging, and supportive community, particularly within our digital channels like Discord. Ideal for someone passionate about AI and education, this role offers the opportunity to impact learners' experiences positively 
and shape the future of AI learning. Responsibilities. Engage actively with learners, resource identification and sharing, feedback collection, community building, event coordination, issue resolution, content creation, reporting and analytics, collaboration with educational team, promotion of AI ethics and safety, skills and attributes, excellent communication skills, community management experience, knowledge of AI and technology, problem solving abilities, collaborative spirit, organizational skills, empathy and patience, innovative mindset, adaptability and commitment to inclusivity. Now, I got to be honest. This is exactly what I was hoping for, something that's close enough that I can just tweak little knobs here and there, but reduce the time that it takes me to write a half dozen job descriptions from however long it would have taken to now however long it takes to prompt. And so we will publish this to anyone with a link. It's basically just for me. It doesn't need to be fully public. And now it's saying GPT inaccessible or not found. Let's hope it's there. It's still there. It was a trick. Anyways, guys, that is a basic GPT build experience. I'm excited to see what you guys build.